What up ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here. Today we're gonna give you a list of tools that you're gonna need to cook. These are the basic things that you have to have in your kitchen. The good news, you probably already have some of them. I know when I was straight out of college, I had a ton of these things in my kitchen for like three years, never used. I thought I'd need them, but I never did. I never cooked, I always eat out or had frozen dinners. A lot of these things actually were really old, but still work to this day. Some were wedding presents I didn't actually use because I didn't start cooking until my late 30s, early 30s, something like that. We're gonna focus on eating fruits and vegetables. If you wanna do paleo or vegan, that's fine, but these are the basics that you need to eat healthy. First up, we need a cutting board. Double-sided is cool. It doesn't matter if it's wood or plastic, either way, but double-sided is really cool because you have plants on one side and meat on the other. The one that I have, is red for meat products like you know steak or meat or shrimp if I cut those and then I can flip it over and use that for the vegetables and the little rubber stamps keep it from sliding all over the place it keeps it off the counter so if I have some nasty stuff on the meat side or even the vegetable side it doesn't get infected which is great I have a picture here of two knives you're gonna need I cannot eat vegetables or plant matter when it's really big and thick so the chef knife here allows you to slice and chop it down whether it's leafy greens or broccoli or celery, it doesn't matter. I like them really small and mixed in with other things so I can eat healthy, but not necessarily enjoy the texture. Celery and carrots, great. That crunch is fantastic like potato chips. However, the rest of them I want it sliced small. I don't like big leaves like salads. That's not my thing. So the chef knife allows you to do that. The second knife, the smaller one, is called a slicing or carving knife. If you're a meat eater and you're doing steaks or chicken, it's wonderful for getting nice and controlled. You don't have to be uber strong. You let the knife do the work. If you're a vegan, if you're doing tofu or some of the really thick tempo and you're trying to prepare that in nicely small squares for either sauteing or frying, it's good for that too. You're gonna need a cooking pot. They are sometimes also called a saucepan. I don't really care what the type is or cast iron. They're really heavy. You don't need to get that. Just aluminum's fine, but make sure that it has a see-through lid. I, I recommended two because sometimes you're gonna have one that's bigger and you're gonna cook different things in that, maybe pasta that you might be afraid of overflowing, or it's rated for a single person, but we're gonna double up the portion so we have more food for the week. So just get two, that way you can cook two things at once or experiment with different sizes. If you wanna get Teflon, also called non-stick, where the food doesn't stick to it, it's easier to clean, that's fine. If you're gonna do that, you gotta make sure you get wood or plastic things to stir in it, not metal and don't screw it up like I did. I didn't know any better. You need to get a baking dish that is glass. You're gonna put chicken or other kind of baking goods in this and it, the heat kind of goes through the glass. You gotta be careful that you, when you take this glass out and set it on your stove that it doesn't sit on other stuff because it will shatter in a million pieces. Metal doesn't have that problem. You also need a baking pan that's metal. It doesn't have to be too deep. Majority of the things that I cook are covered these things in foil because metal, even if it's aluminum, it gets stuck. Food bits on it, it's hard to clean, it gets rust over time. You just put aluminum foil on top of that, that helps. And that's the next thing you need to get is aluminum foil. Measuring cups, I don't care if it's metal or plastic, just make sure that one says cup and one says half cup. Everything else is optional and weird and I don't know why they have it. Also, you need a plastic food containers with lids that are microwave safe. When you're looking around at the plethora of plastic food containers that the grocery store contains, you wanna make sure it says on it microwave safe because we're gonna wash these out, we're gonna put food in them and a lot of it's cold and when we go to work the next day, you put it in a microwave and nuke it. It's quick, fast, easy to cook and warm it up. You don't have to put it in the microwave for some of the cold dishes. A lot of these dishes that I make, you can eat cold, but I like them warm. Worried about plastic seeping into stuff. Don't worry about it. We're only gonna use them enough times we throw them away anyway. A cork pot stand, a piece of circle that's really big and cork. It could be square too. I like the small ones because A, they are easier to store. And if you have a really big, like when you take the baking glass pan or the baking metal pan out and you wanna put it somewhere off your stove, and you don't want to hurt your countertop, you can put two of those little cork pots things and it's fine, you got plenty of room. The can opener, a lot of the things that we're doing with beans, canned goods that are healthy foods, whether it's manual, teensy and metal, or it's one of the electric ones, doesn't matter, it's up to you. I like the small ones, because I like using strength. I feel manly opening it. Colander, you need a one food colander. The one I have is for beans and pasta. So we're gonna rinse those kind of things off. The smaller colanders, food strainers as they're called. You can use for quinoa if you want to. I don't, but they recommend you should. Eating bowls, I'm not gonna show what those are, but you probably had those as a really useful for cooking because you're sometimes holding ingredients in there temporarily. You're not just putting your food in it. So if you have some extra food bowls, as long as they're ceramic or cheap, that's fine. You need some closable sandwich bags. Be very careful when you're shopping for these things because brand names are extremely 
insanely expensive. Make sure when you look at the price tag, look at the little thing on the bottom left and make sure that you're paying per ounce or per bag the cheapest cost. Brand names for things are out of control and also make sure it has a closable lid. You don't have to get the fancy zippers, but as long as it's Ziploc, not the brand, but it shows that it closes, that's what you want. We also want a big flat spatula. The silicon ones are better because if the rubber ones touch metal heat for a while, they'll melt. I like the silicon ones because I can do stir fry with them. Non-stick pans like Teflon and it doesn't damage them. You also need measuring cups. Either get the measuring cup that's one cup or get the one that's four cups. I like the big plastic one because I can throw it around. It's big. It has a lot of water. You can find the four great. If you have to use the one, that's fine too. You also need an oven mitt. Gas, saw, gloves, cuffs, razor wire, hatchet, lattice, and my mitts. Put it on, make sure it's really thick. You don't want the gaudy ones. I actually got a infinity gauntlet one and it's so thin it doesn't work. I actually got burned and so did a lot of other people. They actually recalled it. So make sure that it's really thick. You're gonna get, need two of those because you're gonna use two hands to grab these things. So if you like a glove, buy two of them. And lastly, basting brushes. We're gonna use this to paint some oil and things like that on the aluminum foil. So if you get a basting brush, I don't care which one you get, the barbecue one or the little rubber one, either way. Rubber ones are nicer because they seem to be more dishwasher safe. So that's it, that's your list of tools you'll need. Yeah. Any other questions, let me know.